Thank you so much. So that's a lot of food for thought from the first two speakers to, and uh, I think a very good link also the praise of uh, ambiguity and uh, the need for sustainable skills with the uh, the need to listen to really different perspectives and and how this could be um, one of the solutions we're looking for to deal with our environmental real very real environmental issues so i think that leads very well to um, to a question i have for nancy and uh, because it has to do with environment but i'm also uh, broadly interested in how all these insights and, and um, in some ways ideals of the university, how they translate to the real world. Uh, how, how do you have to deal with a thorny issue like climate change, which of course is, is internationally very difficult. And I also would like to invite you to um, share your views on, on how what we can learn at the university if, uh, based on the experiences you made. Thank you, Mark. Um, I guess I wouldn't consider climate change a, a thorny issue. I, I think it's a, it is one of the grand challenges of our time, as, as uh, Mr. Trebek noted. So, um, and it really requires um, uh, capturing the capacity from uh, all of our all of our partners. Everyone has a contribution uh, to better understanding climate change and taking action on climate change, and, and that certainly is is how. Uh, we're, uh, we're approaching it within uh, within the department and, and the government. Uh, um, as Monica said earlier, she has the best job on campus. I think I have the best job in Environment and Climate Change Canada, uh, leading uh, the uh, science and technology uh, branch, uh, really having the responsibility of, of bringing uh, forward the best possible um, uh, science advice to inform uh, decisions that, uh, that the minister and, and the government are, uh, are taking. Um, that means that um, uh, with uh, going back to the principles uh, as part of the opening of, of this session, uh, being humble uh, to the fact that we don't have all of the answers within, within our organization and we do rely on our relationships um, externally, but making sure that, uh, that uh, we maintain the integrity of the scientific excellence to support uh, decisions that are, that are being uh, made um, uh, as well as the the culture of, of openness uh, and and uh, respect braiding together, for example, Western science and, and indigenous knowledge, and maintaining the integrity uh, of that. Um, uh, I had the privilege. Uh, a few months, well, it's almost a year now, um, working with uh, with our team to uh, to finalize and release the the Canada's Changing uh, Climate Report. Um, I, I usually try and do a, a survey at this point in time. How many people have heard the sentence, uh, Canada's climate has changed at twice the rate, uh, um, the global rate, three times uh, in the north? How many people have heard that? So typically, and this is a typical audience, about 90% of people have heard that sentence that has come uh, from Canada's Changing Climate Report, but that's an indicator of uh, the extent to which uh, others have deemed that to be the truth. Uh, uh, earlier we were, uh, uh, someone was asking me, uh, do, you, do you face uh, skeptics in your, uh, in your role? And we do. So despite the fact that uh, you, we find 90% uh, um, uh, on average of people believing that uh, uh, and, and, and having the confidence in the science, there's uh, uh, not quite 90%, but a significant uh, proportion of, uh, of Canadians and, and global citizens who do not uh, believe that and inform us of that uh, view based on the number of dockets I, I sign off in a day uh, indicating otherwise. So um, part of our responsibility, I think, in terms of, of the context in which we operate and live is making sure that we communicate as at every possible opportunity uh, what the facts are um, and and engaging with people that we don't necessarily uh, uh, are our normal uh, interlocutors in order to be able to to move forward effectively on the issue so I guess those would be uh, some of the reflections on the issue okay. and, uh, do you have any specific advice to universities because we always I think we're always looking to build our education systems in a way that actually then serves the students and serves the world. 
but we very rarely actually go out in the world and ask people, what exactly do you want from us? <laughs> because we just get the course assigned and do our best. So I, I wonder if you had anything that you wish when you hire people or when you uh, see teams work together. Is there anything that you wish that the universities would do slightly differently, perhaps? Or very differently? Uh, <clears throat> I would say uh, continue to uh, to deepen and, um, and uh, um, uh, uh, not to be uh, not to to hold back in terms of, of the advancements in uh, in your disciplines, whether it's natural sciences or not. We absolutely rely on 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 you to make sure that we have uh, we're continuing to test uh, 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 new boundaries and and across all disciplines uh, would be one continue along that track. My second point would be um, the complexity of, of the climate change issue. Other issues, it's the same kind of challenge that we face in terms of biodiversity, uh, action on, on plastic pollution, multidisciplinary approaches. So as much as you're deepening opportunities to uh, ensure that your um, you're shaping the next generation of, of decision makers to be comfortable in multidisciplinary uh, decision making environments. Thank you, thank you so much. So now we are moving to yet another context, journalism. Um, Pascal, you're the redacteur en chef de l'équipe détecteur des rumeurs.